we appreciate it, but maybe you're not in London at the moment, so uh, please hold back. Thank you. Bye-bye. The venue where we do our training used to be free, and that's now changed because they have got no funding anymore. So every session that we do is a thousand pounds. Um, so raising the money for that is very difficult, especially in times of crisis, because the arts is the last thing that people think uh, is important when, when there's people not having money to pay the bills. Circus is all about performance. The whole point of starting the group was to ultimately have a troupe skilled enough to perform at the London Paralympics. Without regular training, that dream has faded. You want to achieve things and, and you've created a, a group of people that really believe in what you do. And to let them down by not being able to continue your training or, or having shows is disappointing. The stress of, of not having the money um, brought me into a severe depression. It nearly caused the collapse of the, of the company. This company has become my reason to live, uh, literally. Um, uh, it's, it's become the reason for which I get up in the morning and I've got a reason to work for. Um, we had our last training session in February, and that was uh, two days, uh, which were paid for by the, by the council here, uh, so we had to do them. Uh, we have not done anything since, so it's been a long time, and they've been missing me, all these uh, kiddos. <laughs> and I've been missing them. It would be really good if we did have more funding, because I think this, is, this project is quite invaluable. Um, it's brought on so many people's confidences and changed people's lives for the better. Well, Jean-Marie introduced me back into circus after my uh, accident. If, I wasn't, if it wasn't for Jean-Marie's influence, I wouldn't have continued doing circus. Um, it used, it was, used to be my profession prior to this physical theatre, and I thought that um, a wheelchair user couldn't do physical theatre anymore because it's, it's physical, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I came along and Jean-Marie kind of welcomed us with open arms. And I thought it was brilliant because he let me join in. Like, there's a lot of activities where it's, like, just for disabled people. And I sort of thought, oh, well, I'll just go and watch and Rick will do it, you know. But JM was like, no, come in, join in. And so, like, I've got to be a part of it as well, which is awesome. I'm wearing a straitjacket. Um, I'm going to be put upside down by my ankles in the straitjacket, and I'm going to try and escape in hopefully under two minutes is the plan. Whether that happens or not is anyone's guess, but yes. Try it. Are you okay there? Yep. Comfy? It's <laughs> comfy. Weekdays, Johnny's behind a desk in an office. It's a far cry from the circus. Three, two, one, go. He has a visual impairment, but that's okay, because he needs to feel his way out of this. Nice. Oh, so much easier when I'm standing up. Coming up to a minute. Yeah. Okay, you got it. One minute thirty. Awesome. <laughs> with any kind of equipment like the silks, you need to be in contact with it physically at all times, otherwise you're falling. Um, so in terms of vision, it's not really a disability in this kind of thing because you, need to know, you have to have that tactile con contact with it at all times. You don't need to look that much once you've learned the tricks themselves and you know where you're going from. There shouldn't be at any point where you have to look around to find out where you're going next. It should all be on contact. So it, it's the perfect thing, really. I can't juggle for the life of me because I can't see the balls, but socks are okay. Even when Jean-Marie has a setback, he uses physical challenges to refocus his mind. Yes, I, uh, I was trained by a Russian teacher. Um, and he was uh, from the old school, so he was uh, very torturous. He would uh, really press me against the wall and, and really give me a, a very hard uh, session. It was hours of intense... Uh, 
pulling and pushing and forcing me to do stuff, but uh, it got me where I needed to go, and uh, I'm still strong enough to be able to continue, so here we are. <laughs> Having somebody that is uh, really strict and very hard on you kind of gives you a, a route to look at life and uh, you just realize that you've got to fight harder to, to get to the goals you, you want to achieve. And it's given me a perspective of just uh, concentrating really on what I want to achieve. There's more history behind Jean-Marie's frustration. He's aware that people who live with disability are often seen as outside of society. He knows what isolation feels like. When Jean-Marie was diagnosed with HIV, he lost his job. He fought against the discrimination and won. Uh, at the beginning of me living in Britain as a, a HIV positive person, um, I got kicked out of a, of a restaurant uh, where I was a manager and I went to court against them, won the case. I was the first person to win such a case in, in the United Kingdom. Um, but as a result of that, I, I lost a lot of confidence. I get to meet loads of people, I get to practice on the silks, I stay healthy. I just generally have fun. I don't know, we were saying this earlier in the break, weren't we? Just yeah, like yeah. outside of the circus, we both feel like just more confident in everyday life. Crocs. One, two, hop. Opa. Okay. Okay. Now going. fit there, yeah? There you go. Okay, yeah. So when you come back down, just slide to the sides. I'd never thought I would be able to do circus, and I don't think I would have had this opportunity without him. They're the stars of the future. <laughs> We set up this session so that you guys could get a chance to see what, what our work is like. Uh, but it, it has very strongly made me feel the value of what I do. Uh, not, not for you guys, but by my pupils, because I realized how, how much they care for the work they're doing with me, how enthusiastic they still are for working with me, and, and how I still need to continue doing this because I am bringing something positive to, to other people with disabilities as well. And I guess that is really what I've gotten out of it, is that I need to keep on fighting. <laughs> Jean-Marie has made every effort to get his troop a spot at the London Paralympics. It's not to be. But he can take heart that several of his performers auditioned for a part in the opening ceremony. Because of uh, the aerial work that Jean-Marie has taught me uh, and encouraged me to do, I've been given a part working for the Paralympic opening ceremony, for doing, doing the training at least. I mean, I have to wait for another audition to see if I actually get to perform, but it's very exciting stuff. Jean-Marie has been a fighter all his life. His circus training has served him well. He knows that with or without the rest of the troupe, the show must go on. AJ McDonald is a busy 26-year-old mother of two boys. Say, what are you doing? <laughs> Say, what are you doing, mate? Baby number three is due in four weeks. This new baby brings challenges. AJ is going blind. A short distance, I can see if I hold things really close to me, but long distance is really gone. I've got worries, you know, having a toddler and a, and a new baby, it's going to be um, tricky. But I try not to worry about um, the future and whether I'm going to be able to see them or not. See ya! Bye!
Attitude is supported by New Zealand On Air.